Hey guys, how are you? So I want to talk about what's been going on in Portland in this video um, in the wake of the shooting that happened Saturday night. This is mostly going to be what's going on with the governor, Kate Brown, the mayor, Ted Wheeler, and local sheriff's department. It's getting pretty interesting. Uh, but first, the last time we left off, and I'm sure you've heard, we were talking about the shooting that happened in Portland. And since then, the victim has been named. It's Aaron Danielson. He is a member of a local, I believe it's a Christian conservative group, the Prayer Patriots, and that was the identifying factor. He had a, a Prayer Patriots hat on and um, a Back the Blue patch on his pants, and that was the identifying factor that led to his execution, unfortunately. Um, the uh, suspect has been taken into custody. This is the man on the videos who is, is said to have been the person that murdered Aaron, and this guy is a 48-year-old male. He is a self-proclaimed, um, as per his social media, 100% Antifa. And the interesting thing about this guy is he has been, it appears to, to be that he has been involved in the rioting that's been going on for 90 days in a row in Portland. He was previously arrested um, and let go with his charges dropped. And it was never said why his charges were dropped. And his charges had to do with rioting, I believe. And one of his charges, which is the more concerning one, was the one um, he was charged for carrying a concealed weapon. And that is one of the charges that was dropped and unfortunately uh, fast forward a, a month after this happened and he has shot and killed someone um, and that's sort of what this video is going to focus on but first um, if you don't know what happened this is the guy that was with Aaron this is Aaron's friend who is standing right next to Aaron when Aaron was shot and I just want to give you a, a, a quick his account of what happened uh, last night it escalated to the point that uh, they executed my partner. Jeez. They hunted him down, they hunted us down, they recognized our Patriot Prayer hats. For anybody who doesn't know Patriot Prayer, Joey Gibson, the citizen's advocate, he's a good man. We support him, he's a Christian and conservative. Um, so they identified our hats. We've got a couple of them right here, we've got a couple of them right here. Pull it out, pull it out. And uh, is that what they said? that's what they said. We turned around. I didn't even it didn't even register that somebody was pointing a gun at us until the shots went off and he took off running. The and shooter took off running. The shooter took off running. And uh, you, you know, you did it takes a second for you to process everything that happened. You know, you did he just shoot at me? Okay. I'm okay. Turn over and Jay's dead. Because he believes something different than them. Jay's not a racist, he's not a xenophobe or whatever label, he's not an ist or an ism. He's an independent man. Well, I'm also going to show you a video from a press conference that the mayor of Portland, Ted Wheeler, gave in response to the shooting. Before I show you this video, I just want to remind you of what's been happening in Portland. There are 90 days in a row of rioting and President Trump has offered time and time and time and time again since the very beginning has offered the mayor assistance. He says, all you have to do is call, I'll send in the National Guard, we'll help, we'll get this under control. We've seen millions of dollars in damage in Portland, officers being assaulted, uh, citizens being ass uh, assaulted physically and verbally. These rioters are going into neighborhoods shouting and shining lights in people's homes. Uh, it's just a really dangerous situation and, and Portland in these areas at, at night. And the problem is the reason this is continuing, the reason this is 90 days in a row is, are be, is because cops are arresting these individuals every night that are committing these crimes and the DA is immediately releasing them without bail and dropping the charges, which is what happened in the case of the man who is being accused of murdering execution style Aaron Danielson. So this is the mayor's response to what has happened in his city. Yesterday's events began with hundreds of cars filled with supporters of the president rallying in Clackamas County and then driving through downtown Portland. They were supported and energized by the president himself. President Trump, for four years, we've had to live with you and your racist attacks on black people. We learned early about your sexist attitudes towards women. We've had to endure clips 
of you mocking a disabled man. We've had to listen to your anti-democratic attacks on journalists. We've read your tweets slamming private citizens to the point of receiving death threats. And we've listened to your attacks on immigrants. We've listened to you label Mexicans rapists. We've heard you say that John McCain wasn't a hero because he was a prisoner of war. And now you're attacking Democratic mayors and the very institutions of democracy that have served this nation well since its founding. So as you can see, he's taking no personal responsibility, deflecting and putting all of the blame on President Trump. And the irony of all of this is less than 48 hours before the deadly shooting happened uh, in Portland, the mayor actually sent a public letter to President Trump, which was pretty snarky if you ask me, saying that uh, because President Trump offered even one more time right before this happened, he said, we got things under control in Kenosha, Portland, all you have to do is ask, I'm here, I'm ready to help keep your streets safe. Uh, so the mayor responded with, no, President Trump, we are fine. We don't need you here. We don't want you here. We don't want your political divisiveness, your demagoguery. We don't want your secret federal agents accosting and um, harassing our residents. We're just fine here. He, he signed it, basically, stay away, President Trump. And this shooting happened less than 48 hours after that. So, of course, Trump saw this. So, of course, Trump saw this and in true politically incorrect Trump form called him a fool on Twitter and it was just a series of tweets talking about how Portland is a mess and Ted Wheeler is incompetent. And then Kate Brown, the governor of Oregon, came out and publicly said, and I think because at this point they are backed into a corner, they have to acknowledge what's going on. There was a murder. This is national news. You can't hide behind it any longer. So Kate Brown, the governor of uh, the state of Oregon, publicly said that they actually are planning on doing something. They're calling in people from other jurisdictions around the state. They're calling in more law enforcement to come in downtown Portland and help with the situation. And I have two more things to tell you because this is where it gets really interesting. So yesterday, after she made this announcement, um, there was a st two state, actually three statements were, were put out by three uh, other jurisdictions. I will read you the main one because the other ones basically are singing the same song, but this one says it perfectly. I'll put it right here if you want to read it, and then I'm going to read it to you right now. So this is a statement from Sheriff Roberts from the, how do you say this? Clackamas, Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. I'll read it to you right now. This is great. On Sunday, August 30th, I read that Governor Kate Brown announced a new plan to address the lawlessness happening in Portland. I was surprised to read that the Clackamas, 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 there it is again, County Sheriff's Office was a part of the plan since the Governor's Office never contacted me. Had Governor Brown discussed her plan with my office, I would have told her it's about changing policy, not adding resources. Increasing law enforcement resources in Portland will not solve the nightly uh, violence and now murder. The only way to make Portland safe again is to support a policy that holds offenders accountable for their destruction and violence. That will require the DA to charge offenders appropriately and a decision by the Multnomah County presiding judge not to allow offenders released on their own uh, rec recognizance, recognizance, sorry, um, and instead require bail with conditions. The same offenders are arrested night after night, only to be released by the court and not charged with a crime by the DA's office. The next night they are back at it, endangering the lives of law enforcement and the community all over again. For us in law enforcement, keeping our community safe is our first priority. Had the governor asked me, I would have told her that no amount of human resources will stop the cycle of violence, her term, that is making Portland unsafe. 
For that to occur, the criminal justice system will need to do its part to hold offenders accountable. And that's what three of them said. They said, we are not sending in officers. It's not safe for them. And basically it's a slap in the face because they're going out, putting their safety in danger every single night to keep this, the, the streets of Portland safe, just for these offenders to be immediately released without charges, without bail. And then they're out the next night doing again. This is why it's happening. It's not Trump's fault. This is why it's happening because the DA is releasing them. They're not being held accountable. Um, I have one more thing for you and then that's pretty much it in this story because last night uh, things got pretty interesting. Uh, I guess again, this is Trump's fault. So protesters, demonstrators, rioters, criminals, anarchists, I don't know. There's a lot of names for them. They showed up at Ted Wheeler's condo and this happened. <laughs> They were outside, they were lighting fires in the middle of the road, they were lighting commercial grade fireworks just feet from the windows of the apartments uh, or the condos. They were shining flashlights into the windows, screaming and yelling. They busted out all the windows of the ground floor sort of lobby area where there was a desk and seating. They threw projectiles that were on fire inside of the lobby building. Uh, could have burnt down the entire building. There's 114 residents. They destroyed a minority owned business that was right next to it. Uh, police did come and eventually break it up. They went home, but it was quite a nasty night for the people in that neighborhood. Um, and they were chanting that they wanted him to resign, which ironically, I don't condone anything that they do ever. But if there is one thing I agree with them on, I think Ted Wheeler should resign. He's obviously incompetent. So we'll see how the rest of this plays out. Uh, that's what's been going on in Portland. Let me know what you guys think. Have a wonderful day. Bye.